part. I hope everyone can see me and hear me. So uh, I, I really thank all the organizers for inviting me. Uh, and I would like to talk to you about CT. Uh, I would have a short uh, beginning and I will tell you something about the principles. Um, and uh, and I will show show you how to approach uh, how to approach a CT and how to uh, describe describe uh, a CT imaging and what to look for. Uh, I really like this picture because this is really uh, how the pet CT should look like. Um, any any harm story about that? Um, it would it would jump out every few minutes because I'm I'm going to show you some CTs and I don't I can't let the, that happen anyway. Uh, let's start with some uh, theoretical things. I will start with the history uh, of a CT, which is uh, uh, I I know that usually uh, usually uh, CT is uh, uh, history is usually boring, uh, so I hope I will just jump through that. But it's it's actually not that old history. Because CT, uh, well, it's called computed uh, tomography because it actually needs computer to work. Uh, so we just can't do that without a computer. So um, the principle actually was known uh, quite longer than the, than the CT itself. Uh, it was made by uh, Alan Cormack, a uh, physician, a physicist. And uh, the first CT machine was built in England by Godfrey Hounsfield. This is this, that's this guy, this guy here in 1971. Uh, interesting fact is that uh, the first machine was, was sponsored uh, by EMI uh, from the from Beatles money. So uh, because of the Beatles, we have CT. I know that they would find the money elsewhere, but it's it's fun fun too. Uh, it's just a fun fact. Anyway, uh, the first CT was really slow, and it takes a lot of time. Now we have uh, we have it a bit quicker. Uh, they actually won a Nobel Prize, these two guys, uh, for the for the CT machine because it actually uh, uh, totally changes uh, changed all the medic um, all the medicine. It was it was as uh, as uh, as big discovery as X ray in in its time, and it's definitely really like like the top of the uh, top of the uh, like modalities we use for uh, diagnosing uh, patients these days. Uh, in nineties, there was a there was a, a big boom with a, a spiral CT. I will show you the principle. And uh, from from uh, from nineteen ninety nine, we have multi slice CT, from, uh, which which is which is the uh, CT we use these days. This uh, this is supposed to be one of the first scans. If you see the first uh, CT machine, uh, well, you can see that uh, it it was uh, it was made for just for a head. Uh, I, not, not much, not, not many people would fit fit in here. So it's just for uh, it was for a head, and it was one of the first scans. Um, scanning principle is it, the principle is actually uh, if 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 you're not if you're not thinking about the computer thing, it's not that uh, it's not that uh, hard to explain. Uh, this this is in general. If you have any uh, um, imaging method which do sections like MRI, uh, SPECT, PET. Uh, like the nuclear medicine uh, techniques, they are using either conventional principle, that means they are doing each slice uh, separately like that, or they use spiral, uh, which is uh, typical for CT. Spiral thing is great because we are doing the whole volume of the of the given area we have. Uh, I will show you how, how how great things we can do with uh, with the whole volume. If you have just one slices or slices, we can, you can actually cover the whole volume, but uh, it's not that uh, it's not that easy. Uh, if you read some textbooks about CT, they usually start with some generations of CT. Uh, I think. Um, what what do you what do you should know that it's all the CTs we have now you know, most of them are or are so-called multi slice or multi detector CTs. Uh, the the principle is like if you have a single slice, it it looks like that. Multi slice, the spiral can be like wider. Uh, it's it's usually the um, there are more more scans, more detectors. The main reason for that is velocity. Uh, like for example, if you do single slice uh, CT of the whole trunk, it would take I don't know three minutes, uh, the uh, or two minutes. Uh, the multi slice scanner would do it in seconds. Uh, the the quick the quickness like the velocity is quite important for CT because we use contrast agent. And if you imagine that we use contrast agent IV, that means in the, uh, like in in veins and in, in arteries. Uh, the blood flow is quite quick, and 
it, it takes about two, four or five minutes uh, for the contrast to get from the vein to kidneys and to urine. If, 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 it, takes, if it takes two, three minutes to do the CT, you would, you would have the contrast like in, in some parts you would have it in arteries in the other parts you would have it in veins and so on. So that's not the way to do it. That's why we need quick examination. So we can like stuck the examination in some kind of a phase of the arterial filling means uh, I will give the contrast agent into the veins and then I will just do the CT in proper time after I administer the contrast agent I will show you later uh, and we can do that that's the main reason for that we can do angiographies we can do uh, multiphasic CTs uh, and that's the thing we do with multi-slice scanners we usually use uh, for example just just if you want to know uh, it's usually uh, 128 uh, Rows, or uh, if you if you want to buy a new CT machine, it's usually this or two uh, two hundred fifty six. Uh, you can get more, but it's, this is just like usual uh, number. Uh, in future, but yeah, well, uh, they, they think that they can use cone beam. That means uh, we can use the whole cone of the X-ray beam. Uh, they use it in dentistry CTs. Uh, well, actually, these days. Uh, the scientists, when they are working on CT machine and how to improve that, they are usually working on software uh, things. So, uh, like on post-processing, like they, they they think that it, they can get uh, much much better picture from uh, lower lower uh, dosages uh, CT CT investigations. The only disadvantage, which is not uh, not much disadvantage these days, is that the multi-slice CT have larger amount of data. If you ask about the uh, about exposure. Like you think, okay, it's quicker. There should be less exposure. That's not how it works usually because it's quicker, definitely. But uh, the the exposure uh, in the time, like the, the the beam is much wider, and the exposure is is is, is much greater uh, in here. So um, I think it's actually slow, lower the exposure from the multi slice CT than on a single slice, but it's not that much that you would maybe think about. That means. So if I sum it up, we have multi-slice CTs, we have more rows of detectors here. And, uh, and the only disadvantage is largely that is, and the main reason is quickness. Uh, it definitely takes just a few seconds when the patient goes through the gantry. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, I think you can write them in the chat and I think we can, uh, we can answer them in the, in the end, okay? Um, okay. Uh, the IV contrast, which is actually quite important for a CT, uh, is thing we, we, well, we gave the contrast in the vein, which is great because when you are doing uh, uh, like arteriographies, angiographies, like normal, uh, like PTAs and so on, you need to access arteries or you can access veins if you want to show veins. But if you want to do something in arteries or show arteries, you need to access arteries, which is usually uh, like uh, connected with a much much higher uh, uh, this discomfort for the patient, uh, so we just uh, we just do uh, it from, uh, we just put an IV in the vein. Uh, there are a lot of things about IV contrast we can discuss, but uh, let's let's just say we put the contrast there, and you, you can see how 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 long it takes to contrast to reach uh, certain things. Like if you imagine anatomy of the of the uh, circulatory system. It starts like in the veins, so it gets into the superior vena cava or inferior, if you, but we usually put it from the uh, from the forearm, so uh, superior vena cava, and then it gets it gets to the right atrium. It gets six to twelve seconds to get there. From there, it's right in the right uh, right ventricle and pulmonary artery. So it, it takes 10, 15 seconds. If you want to do angiography of pulmonary artery, which is used for a pulmonary embolism diagnostics. We would do the CT 15 or 15 seconds after the contrast agent we administered. We, had, we start administering, uh, putting the contrast there, and we started 15 seconds after that. The problem sometimes is that, uh, well, uh, the, we, 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 we don't do that, do, do it usually like that. We, we have a, some, some uh, like a mechanism called triggering that we, uh, we start measuring uh, the density in the pulmonary artery while we are putting the contrast there and when it reaches a certain level we start the examination it's called triggering we do it for uh, if you want to do any angiography uh, ct uh, we can go in further into this if you're interested anyway uh, so that's that's pulmonary artery it gets back through the veins through the lungs into the left atrium so it 
20 seconds, let's say, to the left ventricle and to arteries. So in the arteries, it's usually in 20 seconds, 20, 25, 30 seconds in the aorta. Uh, and uh, then it takes, for example, uh, it, it's, it's really quickly coming back from kidneys. So for example, in, in uh, renal arteries, renal veins, it's in 30 seconds, renal veins, renal arteries, it's, it's because it's really quick there. But for example, from, from lower extremities, if you have intrarenal inferior vena cava, it's, it takes two minutes, three minutes to get to, to have a contrast in the, in the femoral veins, for example. So um, this, this means, what, what does it mean? It means that uh, uh, we, we can, we can uh, somehow uh, change the way the CT looks like. And we can do it by doing a so-called phases. It means we do a proper phase and the phase depends uh, on the indication of the, of, the, of the examination. It means we need to know what we want to, want to uh, get from the examination. We can do it uh, in, there are a lot of phases uh, on, we can do it in native phase. That means without contrast agent. We can do it in arterial phase. That's uh, about 20, 25 seconds. In portal phase, it's for kidney, uh, for, it's great phase for abdomen for kidney uh, liver, for example. Kidneys have usually uh, s uh, special, special phases. Uh, that's, uh, for example, two, two minutes. Uh, the, the thing is, uh, you don't need to know that uh, if you're not a radiologist. Actually, um, as a radiologist, I would totally discourage everyone else to know that. Because it's actually not on the clinicians and on the students to know that. Uh, the only thing you should know is that there are phases uh, and uh, radiologists should know how to do that. And for radiologists to do that, they need to have information. So if you send a patient for a CT or if you are doing with a CT, there needs to be uh, totally like, you need to fill the request form really, really well to know what's, what do you want to uh, find out. Because uh, then, then the radiologist should look on the request form and say, okay, okay uh, they want me to, I don't know, for example, there is something on the kidney on ultrasound and they want me to check it. Okay, so what's, what's there? Is it a tumor? Is it, is it a cyst or, or, or what? So uh, we, we know that we want to check something on the kidneys. So we will do, okay, let's do native phase. Then well, we do it in two minutes and uh, okay, let's say in, in, in five minutes or in arterial phase, 20 seconds and then two minutes and five minutes. Um, uh, we would be actually pissed off when you, when you, when the clinicians would tell us what to do. Uh, but, but maybe it depends on the state. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, the phases are like that. And the thing is you need to think about is every phase of the examination means that the patient gets through the gantry once. So it's one dosage of the radiation. So if we do just one phase, just a portal phase, it's, it's fine. It's just one, one, one dosage of uh, CT, the, let's say two millisieverts, for example, or three millisieverts. Uh, if we do uh, two phases, it's six, it's two, two, two times more. So if you, if you look for, for example, for uh, the dosages, the exp exposure that you get from a CT uh, in, the, in the tables, uh, the, it, means, uh, usually, it, it means the number that, uh, that, that happened when... Uh, when, when you get, for example, four, usually four phases or something. So uh, in, in general, when you do a CT, it's not that high uh, radiation as is in the books, but it depends on the phases because each phase means one's dosage error of radiation. So you need to think about that really, really well, uh, what, what, well if, if you're going to administer it or not. So uh, that's, that's this thing I wanted to talk about. Uh, and, one one step step aside. Um, when I was talking about uh, about multi um, multi uh, multi detector CTs, there is one type of a, of CT which is uh, kind of it's it's not like a next next step of the evolution of CT evolution. It's just a kind of a kind of a blind branch. It's called electron beam CT. Just for for you to know, uh, this is quite quite quick CT. Uh, usually, the CT velocity is limited by extrafusal forces centrifugal forces when it's turning around. Uh, so you can't just turn it really quickly because it would, it would fly out of the machine. Uh, so electron beam CT uh, do, do a special thing that uh, there, is, there is detectors and X-ray tubes around the gantry. And the, the only thing that is moving there is the source of electricity of the electrons. 
So uh, the, it's, it can be really quick. It's just turning around and activating detectors uh, on one side and X-ray tubes on the other side. And uh, it can be really quick. This is usually, this is used for, for heart imaging. For arteries, it's great because it's, it's quite quick. Actually, the thing that limited, limited the velocity is the movement of the table, because if you can't just move with the patient too quickly because he would hit the wall or just get dizzy and, and so on. So. Um, Electron beam CTs are really expensive because the most expensive part of CT is the detectors and the X-ray tubes. If you have it all around the gantry, you can imagine how how, how uh, expensive that can be. And actually, uh, uh, X-ray tubes are the most uh, uh, um, things that get that get spoiled, so uh, <laughs> they are usually under under construction a lot of time. So electron beam CT, just uh, uh, just just uh, okay. Well, what, what the CT actually do is that uh, it takes the human body and uh, uh, it, it, it um, like um, divide the human body into uh, small cubes, which, which are called voxels. It's like a pixel in the picture. Voxel is in the volume. That means it's, it has three dimensions. And uh, like the voxel is a really small, small, uh, small uh, square or just a cube. And it it tells it tells it counted how much each voxel of the body diminishes X-ray uh, X-ray radiation X-ray exposure. Uh, so all we have from a CT is a really a big amount of numbers for each voxel of the body, and the number is telling us how much each voxel of the body diminishes X-ray. Uh, we we just like somehow calculated uh, the numbers. So we just need to work with them. And the numbers we gave, we call Hounsfield units uh, because of the, of the founder of the few, for first machine. And the Hounsfield units are uh, artificially made numbers, which, tell, which, which tells us how much each voxel diminishes the X-ray. And this is how, it's, how they are defined. This is not so important. The important thing is that it's defined so the water is actually zero. And the lowest you can get is air, which is min minus about around 1,000. One, uh, one uh, this is the lowest we can get. Uh, if we, uh, if we look here, most of the soft tissues, uh, forget about that, there should be plus, uh, there is a mistake here. Uh, but uh, most of the tissues are, are uh, uh, above zero till 60. Uh, it, it, it changes when you get a contrast there uh, and, and, and um, but it's usually like that. And uh, bone is usually between 500 and 1,000, and metals can get to 3,000. Three, three that means we have 4,000 Hounsfield units uh, uh, in the picture. We can, get, we can have that. Uh, if, we, if we put uh, like uh, shades of, shade of gray to each, uh, each of that, that would be 4,000 shades of gray. Well, that's uh, that's a sadomasochistic thing to do. Uh, much more, much, much, much worse than fifty shades of gray, which we usually can see. That's why we just need to like take just some part of it. We can, we need to take just some, some, some part of the voxels. Uh, that's called windows. We we just take part of it to look at. Uh, so that's uh, something I'm going to talk about in the next slide. But um, back to the densities. Uh, the densities. I, I don't think it's like necessary to know know that there are just kind of some some things that are quite important. For example, that fat is below zero. If you uh, actually remember on uh, on X-ray, if you have densities on X-ray or just uh, transfer densities on X-ray, uh, it's 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 air. Uh, air is darker than fat. fat. Fat is actually darker than water, than water and soft tissues, and then bone and metal. Uh, and that's the same thing on uh, that's the same thing on a CT, but we just have a number to do that. Uh, so uh, fat is below zero. It's it's quite important for many things. If we measure Hounsfield unit somewhere and we get uh, a negative value, that means below zero. It means two things. There are either there is either fat there in the in the in the in the thing or uh, or or an air. For example, if you have a, if you have a, let's get back to the tumor on the kidneys. If you have a tumor on the kidney and we measure the fat there, uh, density, and it's below zero, minus 20, for example, it means, uh, well, it's not usual to have air. So it's usually fat there. And it means, okay, there is an expansion of a kidney with fat. 
And we know, uh, we, we know like from literature that uh, if you have a tumor on the kidney which has fat, it's mostly benign. Uh, because they're just really not, not usual to have a, you have a fat in, in, in malignant tumors of kidneys. And like uh, uh, metastasis of liposarcoma is not so usual. So uh, that's why we are measuring sometimes the densities and we are working with that. Uh, another thing, uh, for example, that's the reason why we can see fresh blood in the brain without contrast, because brain usually have 20, 30 uh, Hounsfield units. Again, that it should be plus, not minus. Uh, uh, and blood is 40. That means it's, it's higher than the, uh, than, the, than the brain tissue. That, that means if I, if I, if I have fresh, fresh, blood, fresh blood there, it would be hyperdense. But if you have fresh blood in the, in the abdomen, for example, you can see the liver have similar density as the fresh blood. So you can't see that. That's uh, about contrasts, uh, not about contrast agents like contrast uh, iodine, but about contrast itself, uh, because the, the blood have the same, same value. That's how we need to think about it. Uh, and that's why we are using the windows. Um, so windows, we can, uh, we, we need to f like take only something. You can see, for example, on here we have a, that, that, that this is a window for soft tissues. Uh, you can see, you can't see much from the lungs because they are minus, uh, minus a thousand here. And uh, this is a lung window. And uh, again, here, I can't just see, say, see much from the, from the soft tissues. Uh, there is no need to remember the numbers. We usually have a short uh, shortcuts on the keyboard for for changing. I will show you. Uh, I will show you here. So uh, just just wanted to show you how how we use the densities uh, and things like that. Uh, this this is a case of well, this is a sections through the through the uh, thorax. This is a vertebra. This is aorta, and this is heart and lungs. And there was a there was a tumor here, or, or just a lesion, or just some 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 something. Uh, and it was a young patient actually, uh, and uh, there was no no suspicion on uh, like a malignant tumor. Uh, they just think uh, they they suspect that this uh, this is a AV malformation actually, and they want to check us because uh, well if if they suspect AV malformation this is not good to do biopsy because it will bleed a lot. So uh, they 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 tell they, they ask us okay can you can you uh, solve this problem for us and like we said yeah we can do a multiphase CT and we can usually uh, tell if it's AV malformation. So uh, we do three th three uh, phases with native phase. So that's this picture, uh, the same, same section in the arterial phase and then in the, in the later in the venous phase, 60 seconds. And you can see we measure the Hounsfield units there. If, if you see, this is aorta with the blood. So it's 50 Hounsfield units uh, in a native picture, 33, okay. And the arterial phase, you see that there is a contrast in the aorta, which raises the density to 350 uh, and in the, in the lesion. It actually arises to 150. Uh, in 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 later phase, uh, it, uh, it it gets smaller in the aorta and uh, in the in the uh, also in the uh, it gets smaller in the lesion. Uh, this dynamic, like it, it gets really really uh, high in in quite a short time, is a typical for a vascular lesion. Uh, for example, if this would be a tumor or hype uh, or or just a metastasis or something, it's usually don't raise this high uh, amount. It, it would be about 67, uh, 60, 70. Uh, and then it would get actually even higher on the venous phase because it gets into the interstitial spaces. Uh, this means that there is a, there, there is a, there is a, uh, it's like washout because it gets out of the, uh, out of the veins. So this dynamic, for example, tell us, okay, yeah, this is really, really probably, uh, the probability is really high that this is just a vascular thing. Uh, and it's probably AV malformation. So uh, we, we, we can work with the densities like that. The, the amount itself, like for example, you can say, okay, we can, we can measure the density of, a, of a pleural effusion to tell if it's a, if it's a blot, if it's a exudate, transudate, we can do that. But um, the, if you just measure one, 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 uh, one number, it's not that specific. 
uh, sometimes blood can be really hypodense. Uh, sometimes actually exud exudate can be really, really, uh, really dense. So uh, the the results in this area is not great. But uh, when when we are doing multiphase uh, CTs, the densities are great to uh, to do. Uh, there are a lot of lot of cool things I will show you uh, in the uh, in, in there, uh, and I'm just now uh, switch into the into the software, and I will show you what we can do with uh, with a CT itself. Uh, let me try. I will. I, I need to uh, uh, click the share thing. I hope I will. Yeah, I hope you you can see now the Philips portal. Uh, if if you can't see, it, just give me somehow uh, somehow feedback. But uh, I hope you see it. There 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 are two. I, I prepared for two examinations. Uh, HRCT of the of the thorax. When uh, I will show you some things there, and and abdomen. I anonymized that. Uh, the patient name is not UIMS. Uh, it's it, I chose that for of course. Anyway, so I will start that, and I will show you how I will show you how we work with the data. Because that's actually something that you maybe will be doing. Because uh, uh, most of the doctors in the hospital have access to uh, to imaging methods, and you can uh, you can you can work with that. So uh, we will start with uh, or um, you know, like looking on this this data sets. Uh, yeah, I can I, I I I will delete this because this is actually something that we were just like um, just. It's not an important thing. Okay, so uh, we have we have a few things here. Uh, you can see Pritza means lungs, mediastinum. Uh, you can see, uh, I can switch that. It, uh, th this is only one phase, it's native. There is no contrast in there. It was the patient gets through the gantry just once, there and back again as, as, as the Belbo begins. And uh, that's what we get. We get some raw data, and then from the raw data from the from the from the machine, we we can uh, we counted these these data sets. Uh, if you look on the picture here, you can see that we have something with thickness here, which means 0 0.9 millimeters. This is called so-called so thick slice, uh, thin slices. 0 0.9 is really thin. Uh, sometimes you can have it uh, 0 0.7, 0 0.6 with the, with the newer machines, but 0 0.9 is quite nice. Uh, some uh, older machines usually work with one 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 point five millimeters and so on, and uh, what what to do with the thin slices? We have also uh, this these slices. For example, they have uh, okay, uh, they don't have okay one millimeters. It's not that, that bad, but we usually have five millimeters. Yeah, I'll show you this one. So um, if you compare actually these two in, images, you can see that this is the thin slice and this Hi, is five so millimeters. Dr. Benesh, we can't see the slides. We can just see the settings menu. Aha. Uh -huh. Thanks. The patient directory. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, now. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the for the feedback. Uh, that's what I. Yeah. There are too many windows here. Um, great. Great. Uh, so I, let's back, get back to that. Uh, I will show you this one. So that there are there are uh, lungs, mediastinum, uh, and if you if you again go back to the here, we have thickness zero point nine, uh, and this is five millimeters, for example. These two things actually are are, are the thin slices, nine millimeters. That, and that's the, again, that's the the patient gets through the gantry just once, and we we just uh, we just uh, com computed from the raw data. We computed these two uh, data sets. This was uh, if I put it in the same window, you can see the difference between the the lungs here and mediastinum. Uh, in older older CTs, it, this was called uh, kernels, and it was called uh, soft kernels and sharp kernels. We just can. Uh, this is so-called iterative reconstructions uh, we use these days, which are much much like better. Uh, and uh, this is just a sharp imaging, and this is soft imaging. And you can see the there is a really big difference in 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 there. For example, if you if you if you look on the liver, I will go here. This is this is abdomen, liver, spleen. Uh, you know, we can just, uh, you can see this is much nicer here than here. I, I, I can't actually say much from this picture. Uh, if you put it into lung windows, uh, and I will just zoom it on the one lung, you can see that uh, the lungs are much, much nicer in the sharp picture than in the soft picture. Uh, 
again, that's just the two ways how to uh, do reconstruct the raw data. Uh, and it's important to know that because if you're just like finding yourself uh, looking on a CT and looking on pictures like that, and like can't imagine what you're looking at, you're probably chosen the wrong data series and you need to uh, change that uh, or look in the different windows for that. Uh, the sharp imaging is great for lungs and for bones. You can see the bones are also better here. So that's the parts when you have big density uh, changes. And uh, and uh, so soft is for soft tissues, which is which is actually uh, much better. You can actually because not not all the investigations have this sharp imaging. You always have the soft one. You usually you sometimes don't have the sharp one. Uh, you can you can see the lungs in the sharp one uh, in the soft one also. Uh, just just you can't say say much about uh, some some discrete things in the interstitium and so on. So uh, this is just the first thing I want to show you. Then the second thing is that um, was the the slices like that. Uh, I will get, I will do okay. Uh, Okay, yeah. Uh, now you can see that we have the, again the same investigations. Uh, this is uh, this is 0 0.9. This is thin slices. This is five millimeters, and you can see how the five millimeters is nicer. Uh, you can look here. Okay, this is not nice. Uh, this is much nicer. What what happened here? The, the five millimeters it's reconstructed from the nine millimeters, and I will show you how we do that. Uh, if uh, I will get back to only to, to the thin slices and I can actually work with the thickness. I can raise the thic thickness uh, to five millimeters. And what I done here, you can see it on the on, on here. Uh, if I go back to the thin slices, it disappears. When I go five millimeters, I have five millimeters of the volume. Like this is five millimeters of the volume. And this picture that I see here is average picture from the five millimeters. Like I. Uh, from from all the data from this five millimeters volume, I made this nice uh, picture. And wh whenever I go up and down, I always do a picture like five millimeters tissue and uh, average picture from the this this point on. Uh, so it's it's like that. Uh, it's much much nicer than the, than this one. Why? The question is why am I doing that? This when I have already five millimeters in here. Uh, the problem is, and uh, I think you should remember that if you are working in a hospital uh, and you are not a radiologist, you are usually working with some kind of a, uh, a viewer for for normal people, for non-radiologists, not specific for CT. This this imaging, uh, this the, uh, uh, this Philips software is made for CT. It's made for CT imaging. I would not look on X-rays on this machine uh, on the, the, in this software. I can use that, but I'm not doing that because this is for a CT. But uh, the, not all not all the doctors in the hospital have uh, have access uh, access to uh, to to this soft kind of software. It's not just Philips. There can be a lot of things. Uh, so it depends on the CT machine. Usually, uh, every every uh, provider of CT machines have uh, its own uh, software for that, and uh, it depends. It totally depends. Uh, you can do a lot of things there, but you need thin slices to do that. If you are, if you have uh, just normal, normal uh, viewer, uh, don't use thin slices. If you even if you have that, because um, if you have thin slices, th this this thing I didn't I, I'm doing here like the averaging. Th this this is not, not most of the normal uh, viewers can't do that. Uh, so you will just use this terrible picture with 0 0.9 and the thing is you usually need to use the uh, uh, the thing in the on the mouse which is roll the roller on the on the mouse and it, it's totally pain in the ass to move there uh, so if you have the five millimeters you can you can move much quicker so uh, use uh, every time you are working with CT don't use thin slices unless you have a special software for that. Use the five millimeters or there are okay one millimeter slices, which is again better. But you can see what happened here. If I have thin slices, you can see you have nice picture on here. You have coronary sections, sagittal sections, and they're nice. If you put five millimeters there, you can see they're not nice. 
because that this data are already uh, are already uh, like um, they don't contain the whole volume. They contain like five every five millimeters, just one picture there. That's why why we can we can do the constructions and things like that. I can show you what we can do with the uh, uh, with the thin slices. We can we can okay we can raise the thickness, which is like the least thing we can do. Uh, in the lungs, we can some we can do things like that. Uh, MIP means that I'm uh, taking this volume and I am this is called maximum intensity projection. That means I am taking just maximum intensity from the given uh, window, uh, and I can nicely see vessels as a vessels, and if there is some lesion or something, I can see it as a as a as a, as a lesion. Like, like in here, for example, or there is a small dot here, for example, which is some some kind of a small small lesion. This is not nothing. Everyone have something like that in the lungs, but uh, I would never never saw that when uh, without without this investigation because I will show you how it looks like on the on the normal pictures. It's uh, it's just it's just this. Okay, uh, I would never see that without uh, the MIP uh, projections. Uh, I will just just to to uh, for you to imagine. I will show you how it looks like if you do that uh, with the five millimeter slices. Uh, still, there is a there is the sections of the five millimeters. Still, you can do that in here, but uh, the picture is not nice. Anyway, so that's one thing we can do. Another thing we can do, uh, we can uh, well, we can do a lot of like planes, like plane uh, coronary sagittally, but not just like that. We can we can play actually with. Uh, with the whole volume, we can like put a, for example, a rotation center somewhere, like in here, and I, I can rotate the investigation around the dot. I'm rotating the data, so that's just so totally terrible planes, not anatomical planes. Uh, why why we are doing it? I will show you in the next CT why we we can do that for with with vessels. Uh, so that's one thing. Another thing is volume. We can do a lot of 3D stuff there. So, uh, for example, I switch to volume. There, uh, we can see a rib cage, and I can just like, okay, turn around the patient. Uh, this is great for if you have some fractures of the ribs. You can nicely see them here. Uh, you can actually uh, add a data, and there you can see muscles. You can get to the skin. Okay, I can get it back. Uh, if if you want, for example, just to see the uh, one bone, we can actually do a kind of a cutting. I can just do this and I have every data um, there out and we have just a, we can do that again and we have just a sternum here and we can turn it around if you want uh, we can actually uh, export that mounted on the 3d printer and we can do a 3d picture a 3d 3d thing uh, which is actually great with the with uh, with um, complex fractures if you have a but uh, if you have a, uh, for example a calcaneus bone fracture and you do 3d imaging uh, and you would do it uh, 3d 3d print uh, 3d print uh, and you would go, give it to the surgeons uh, well uh, they can get a kind of a, a traumatological orgasms from that uh, because it's really nice uh, so this is still we can do that because we have thin slices and we have the whole volume of the examination we can do a lot of things another cool thing is endoscopy uh, for example we can get anywhere we want for example i can get into uh into the trachea here and now i'm in the trachea i'm looking down the trachea to the bronchi and I can do that. Uh, th this is not much useful for diagnostics because everything in here will look the same. If you have a if you have a mucus uh, plug, mucus plugs. Uh, if you have a tumor, if you have a foreign body, it will look the same. That's the problem with the virtual endoscopy things. But if we have some pathology in the bronchi, we can sometimes like uh, do the picture for the bronchoscopist to to be prepared and not to be surprised when they do when, when they when they look but you can you can see how how far we can get into the bronchial uh, tree which is actually good if you want to help a bronchologist to navigate the uh, if you, they want to do trans uh, biopsy or something we can actually help them with that sometimes this is kind of a special 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 thing we can actually get into lungs which is not a thing that usual endoscopists are able to do uh, they, they definitely don't want to do that uh, and we can move in the in between vessels in the lungs. This is kind of a thing that uh, that we can do if the if the internet is out and we don't know what to do at, uh, at work. So uh, still, we can do a lot of things like that. I will open the second Im imaging and I will 
because uh, I want to give you uh, room for questions. Uh, and so screen sharing has stopped. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry, I will, I will share it again. Okay, uh, where is the Zoom thing? Yeah, okay, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to share the screen again. Yeah, okay, you should see it now. So we have another, we have another uh, investigation here. Uh, and this is actually with contrast agent. So I will again do five millimeters and I will show you how we are, now I will show you how we are describing the X-ray. Uh, the CT. Okay, so uh, let's let's just start with. Uh, I will show you some more things we can do with the contrast here. Uh, this is much much nicer. For example, the menestanum is much nicer than uh, than on the native picture. We can see this aorta with the vessels. Uh, I always hate when the anatomy uh, anatomy when they just give you one section and they are asking about things because this is not how it works. Like uh, if you have this section, for example, and someone asks you what is this structure. I don't need to know that. Well, I know that it's a it's, it's a brachiocephalic uh, trunk, uh, but uh, you can just follow it. You can just go up, and you see it's going here and it's dividing into something which is looking look like a carotid artery and subclavian artery. Or if you go down, you just see that it continues to the aorta. So you know what what it is. That's why we. That's how we are working with the CT. We are not working with sections. We are working with the whole volume, go up and down every time, and searching. Uh, it's the same thing. If you if you if you listen two weeks ago when I had a lecture on uh, on chest X-ray, uh, I told you to have a proper list of things to look for. The same thing is with CTs. Uh, for example, if we have abdomen. We usually start like checking liver, spleen, suprarenal glands, kidneys, pancreas, lymph nodes, and uh, intestines, and so on. Uh, and again, the same thing. It's not important in which which order you are doing it. The important thing is not to forget anything. So uh, that's why we usually have uh, like uh, pre, pre, pre filled texts for uh, when we are describing that. Uh, if we have the arteries, we can really use the rotation. Uh, I, will, I will show you, for example, if I want to see aorta, I can like, uh, well, I will slightly uh, like that. And I can turn it, turn it around and I can much nicely see aorta here, okay? Uh, I can actually use uh, MIP again, which are much nicer here. And I can see the three branches from the aorta. It's just totally non-anatomical uh, like section. And I can, I, can, I can work with that. Uh, maybe some, some 3D things here would be much in more interesting. We can see the arteries here. Uh, I can show you some, okay, a CTA, yeah. And uh, this is not arterial, arterial phase uh, because there is some uh, blood in the vein, uh, contrast in the veins also. But there are a lot of lot of things we can we can we can do. We can uh, visualize just uh, just a, just a fa just an air. So this is just air visualizing. So you can see lungs. You can see air in the intestines. Uh, again, these things are great if you want to show something. We are not using it much for diagnosis. Uh, if we diagnose things, we usually do it from from axial axial uh sections okay um i think i i told you everything i wanted to tell you uh and i would be glad if you have any questions and we can discuss something whatever you want uh, are there any questions in the chat or you can open the chat or are there any questions you can ask Okay, there are no questions. Um, okay, is there a question? Can we go through an example? Like uh, in, of a CT scan, how to describe it? Okay, uh, okay, okay, I can start with that. So let's start with this investigation. We have a CT, we have a CT from, uh, uh, that starts from the neck 
and ants uh, and ants uh, in the pelvis. And I usually start, uh, so we can start describing. We start with the thorax. Uh, uh, I will start. I will start with uh, the, there is a part of the neck visualized. So uh, there is trachea here and and uh, thyroid gland. So we can check the thyroid gland. It is not enlarged. Uh, there are no uh, no hypodensities there. Um, we can check in the, in the supraclavicular regions, we can check for lymph nodes because supraclavicular lymph nodes are always bad if they're enlarged. Uh, I think they're just, uh, these are just vessels. It's kind of a really, really bad thing to, or, uh, to orient it itself here, but uh, let's say there is nothing there. Uh, oh, five millimeters and average not in my piece. Then I will continue to mediastinum. Uh, again, the, 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 the um, order of things is totally like up to the, the investigator. So I will continue to in the mediastinum. There are just vessels. This is, uh, this is a uh, superior vena cava. This is uh, left brachiocephalic vein and branches of the aorta. There are lymph nodes. These small things are lymph nodes. There is esophagus in the back and uh, there is azigus vein entering the superior vena cava. So there's joint and anatomy. This structure here is a recess, recesses, a recess of pericardium which is usually quite usual on the aorta here. Uh, sometimes it's missed as a lymph node, but this is uh, just a pericardial recess. Uh, and that's the heart. This is probably a lymph node in the, in the right uh, lung hilum, but um, you need to trust me. I, there is no way I, how, how I can <laughs> tell you uh, that's, that's right. This is pulmonary artery. Can actually check if there isn't any pulmonary embolism in the main, main, main branches. If there will be dark spots, this is contrast in the artery. There will be dark spots there. Uh, okay, so that's that's the mediastinum. I will go down and check if there isn't anything wrong here. Okay, it's fine. This is esophagus uh, going into the stomach. So that's mediastinum. Then I usually skip into the lung window and I can check the lungs. So I will just go through that. Uh, I don't have a sharp, sharp uh, reconstruction. So I will just go through that like that. There isn't anything major going on, nothing happening. Uh, I usually do the MIPs then, so I will see uh, see if there are any lesions. Okay, I can see a lesion here in the lingula. Mm -hmm. Checking, comparing, nothing else. So we can check the lesion in the lingula that we found. Uh, so let's get back to five, millim five millimeters and average picture, and I will go to check that. Where is it? Okay, so yeah, there is a lesion. I will I will measure that. Okay, seven millimeters. Okay, that I think it should be checked. It depends. Uh, it depends on the history of the patient. It depends if the patient is a smoker, yeah, and and uh, on a lot of things. So I will just uh, uh, for my 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 uh, well, I think it's just a benign thing. Actually, in in lingula, there are a lot of things that uh, that are benign mostly, but. Um, I think definitely that it, 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 it needs to be checked. Seven millimeters lesion should be checked uh, in, in three months or so. So, uh, and then I get to abdomen. So I will check the liver. Oh, they're just normal. You can see, you can see uh, this is a portal vein dividing there. Uh, there is these dark spots are portal veins going into inferior vena cava. Um, there is a this this dark thing here is gallbladder, uh, which is not not nice. This should be bigger. This is probably after some meal, uh, and okay, there is a holodoc duct a bit. So that's liver, which is normal. This is a spleen. So I will check the spleen again. Uh, it's not enlarged, and it seems homogeneous. No no lesions there. Uh, no hyperdensities. Uh, Suprarenal glands are actually uh, like you you. Oh, always thinks that they are sitting on the on the kidneys. They are more medially. This is suprarenal gland on the left side, this triangular thing. So that's normal suprarenal gland, left suprarenal gland, and the right one is here. So that's suprarenal gland, again, normal. Usually they can have some expansions. Kidneys, that's the kidney, that's the kidney. Uh, you can see that there is a cortex and the medulla. We can, uh, if you want to see them better, we can, we can play with uh, with this and we can like look at that, you can see the pelvis, normal, and uh, col col columns, normal, normal kidney, nice normal kidney. Uh, then pancreas, that's mostly uh, uh, this, this structure going from, uh, from uh, uh, spleen and ending with the head in here. 
has a pancreas. It's it's, uh, it's again no no uh, no hyperdensities. Uh, this small this thing here is Virzung duct, this pancreatic duct, which actually should not be should not be visible. Uh, this is a uh, okay. Uh, some literature said that whenever you see it, it's actually pathological. So probably some chronic chronic uh, chronic pancreatitis can be there, or uh, sometimes the CT is so great these days that we can see it even if it's normal. Uh, but because I think the pancreas seems nice and fine, but uh, depends on other tests also. So and then uh, the hardest thing is actually the intestines and the abdomen. This uh, this patient don't have much abdominal fat. We like fatty people on CT because fat gives us place and uh, divided structures and we can see much better fat people are great for ct that well they they need to fit into the gantry but uh like normally normally fat people uh, or, or uh like uh, overweight people are great for ct uh yeah uh, thin, thin people should be put on ultrasound uh but uh we can see this is much better on a coronary section. So I will put coronary section here and we can we can look on the intestines here. So we can see intestines, this is small intestines. You can see the vessels in the mesentery here, uh, which you can see arcades, you can see it here. And the small things in here, that's uh, lymph nodes on the mes mesentery. So again, we can check if they're enlarged or not. They're actually enlarged here. This is enlarged lymph node on mesentery. So, um, Still, it can be virosis. It can be just normal. It can the patient can have a can have some kind of a, a malnutrition thing. Uh, celiac uh, disease can do that, and so on. And the, and it, or it just can be there without any cause. Sixteen millimeters is enlarged uh, lymph nodes. So uh, we just had a question on how to look yes. for lymph nodes. Yes. Yes, there is okay. Uh, how uh, how to look for the lymph nodes? The question you mean? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Great, lymph nodes are cool, are a tricky thing uh, because lymph nodes uh, lymph nodes on the axial ax, uh, on these sections you need to um, you usually find the lymph nodes because they are there and they just disappear when you go up and down because they're just small things vessels when that goes up and down don't disappear uh, the third, we can check the lymph nodes lymph nodes we need to know where to look for them uh, if you can't see them in here with this is great. Uh, you usually see axillary lymph nodes. I will show you axillary lymph node. This is axillary lymph node. Uh, this whole thing is axillary lymph node. This is fatty, fatty center and just the cortex is visible. It's chronical, nice, nice chronical uh, uh, normal uh, lymph node. Uh, the, all these small things are lymph nodes, which are normal. Uh, again, on the other side, so that's lymph nodes in the axilla. In the mediastinum, you have uh, lymph nodes around uh, around trachea usually. So this small thing is a lymph node. Uh, there and and in the lung hilum, and this is actually quite hard sometimes to grasp uh, the mediastinal lymph nodes. In the abdomen, you have lymph nodes around aorta. So uh, if you if you check the retroperitoneum like that, you can see that this is a lymph node. Okay, that's a lymph node. Uh, yeah, there are, and there are these small things. So there are some 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 of that is also uh, neural plexuses, but some of it are, are lymph nodes. For example, this structure is not a lymph node because when I go down, it's still there. And when I go up, it's still there. And we can follow it and it would get, it would get to, uh, to vein. So this is inferior for actually inferior mesenteric vein. Uh, but it depends, okay, it gets down. So uh, you need to follow it if you are not sure. But if you see lymph nodes are usually disappearing when you go up and down. This is why why it's it's nice to do uh it's for the lymph nodes it's nice to do coronary sections because you can you can see them much nice ni much more much more they are much more obvious like like in here in here is in here um, if you don't see it uh it's just you need you need a praxis to look for that uh, I hope I hope I can just uh, I I showed you some uh, general you have some general idea how we are looking on CDs. Uh, it's it's uh, it, there are areas which are quite hard to grasp uh, in pelvis, for example, to see all the structures, uh, lymph nodes. You can see how many vessels are in here, uh, and 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 so on. So that's uh, that's actually not that easy. But this is usually how we do that. Okay. Do you have any other questions? 
Okay, yeah. Pinpoint the appendix, great question. Uh, okay, let's have a look on for the appendix. I will start with in here because that would be much better for you. So this is a cecum. And uh, okay, and that's the appendix. Uh, we can put a rotation center there and let's uh, let's have a better look. Sometimes you, you can't see it actually. Uh, oh, where is the rotation center? Okay, yeah, in here. Where was it? Uh, I lost it. Oh yeah, here. Oh, it's not it's not getting better. So this is appendix. This small thing here is an appendix. Any other questions? Okay. I think that somebody's just asking, um, do you measure the lymph nodes on the short axis? Yeah, okay, yeah, there is a question. I am, yeah, thank you, I, I missed that. Uh, yeah, that's, a, that's quite an advanced question. Yeah, lymph nodes, if you measure lymph nodes, uh, uh, you should measure two dimensions. Um, because the the, the uh, if, if they are uh, oval or if they are round, it's important for the diagnosis. But uh, officially, you should measure uh, short axis, yes. Uh, it depends. It depends. I, I, personally, when I'm measuring lymph nodes, I usually measure the long axis or put two diameters. It depends if I'm doing that for hematologists uh, with uh, lymphomas uh, because they, they they need it for for uh, for diagnosis for some some uh, some uh, um, um, tables and so on. So it depends. But usually, yes, you should measure the long short axis of lymph nodes. Any other questions? Is that yeah? I will go through the chat better back. No, there are no more questions. Okay. Um, no, I think that's everything. We haven't got any from the YouTube either. Yeah, great. Thank, thank you, thank you. And um, I'm, I'm. I think I will end here. I will switch into the uh, PowerPoint presentation with two last, two last slides, um, and. Uh, and I will, and I thank thank you for for listening. Oh, sorry, I need to get there. Thank you very much for this talk. We'd really appreciate it if everybody could fill out the feedback form. I'm just posting the link in the chat right now, and there should be a QR code on the screen shortly. Uh, I'm sorry, I need to. Uh, where I, <laughs> I lost the share screen. It's fine. No worries. I've posted the link in the chat. I'd really appreciate it if everybody could fill in the feedback form. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a nice evening. Great. Thank you very much, Dr. Banish.